Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington from Learn Your Land. And in this video, we're gonna briefly discuss how you can use birch bark successfully to treat wounds. Now this is a black birch tree right behind me, Betula lenta. And if you're unfamiliar with birch trees, the identification of them, feel free to check out some of the recent videos that I've done. I go in detail on how to properly identify various birch trees. Now this is nothing new, using birch bark to treat wounds. If we look at the ethnobotanical records here in North America, we see various cultures utilizing birch bark. For example, the Cree culture utilized paper birch, the outer bark, to bandage burns. And the Maliseet and the Mi'kmaq cultures used the gray birch to treat infected cuts. And it's no surprise that modern researchers would be interested in elucidating some of the mechanisms behind the wound healing effects of birch bark. And it's great that research is being done on this because, you know, birch trees are widely accessible and relatively inexpensive as well. And in this video, we're going to talk about how birch bark has been shown in one particular study recently in PLOS1. It's an open access journal, PLOS1, however you want to say it, that found that, and this is the conclusion in the study, so we're just going to jump to the conclusion before we get to the mechanisms, but the researchers commented that birch bark has a high potential to improve wound healing. And they found out that birch bark works in two main phases of the wound healing process. And we're going to talk about those two phases one at a time. The first stage of the wound healing process involves inflammation, acute inflammation. We're not talking about chronic inflammation, which is associated with a variety of degenerative illnesses. We are just talking about acute inflammation, which is absolutely essential when it comes to wound healing. And so birch bark helps to stimulate pro-inflammatory cytokine release. And cytokines are molecules that include chemokines and other growth factors. And what they do is attract certain white blood cells to the site of injury, which include macrophages and granulocytes. And those two latter compounds have very specific and essential roles. They help to, number one, remove dead tissue from the site of injury, and number two, they help to prevent any kind of bacterial infection. So think about this, you get cut, you would want to remove dead tissue first, and you would also want to prevent any kind of bacterial infection. In birch bark, specifically a compound known as betulin, is able to enhance that acute inflammation to get that process started. So maybe you're familiar with that compound betulin, because in the video in birch polypore, we talked about betulin. If you've ever consumed the chaga fungus in a notice obliqueus, maybe you're familiar with betulin as well. It's a triterpene compound synthesized in the bark of the birch tree. So it's no surprise that medicinal mushrooms that grow on birch trees would then concentrate betulin. So it's betulin that's able to stimulate the pro-inflammatory cytokine release, which attracts certain white blood cells that removes dead tissue and then prevents any kind of bacterial infection. The second stage of the wound healing process that birch bark is involved in is new tissue formation. So let's think about this. We already enhanced acute inflammation. We removed dead tissue and we're preventing any kind of bacterial infection. Now we want to seal the wound with new skin cells. And this is where the new tissue formation stage comes in. So birch bark is able to increase the migration of new skin cells. And these skin cells are specifically referred to as keratinocytes. They're located in the outer layer of skin or the epidermis. But not only are keratinocytes attracted to the site of injury, but other specialized cells that are responsible for the buildup of collagen and the extracellular matrix. And these cells are known as fibroblasts. So we enhance acute inflammation, we remove dead tissue, we prevent any kind of bacterial infection, and now birch bark is able to increase the migration of new skin cells to help seal that wound. And researchers found that there are three compounds in particular for this second stage, the new tissue formation phase. Betulin, we just talked about betulin, that's that triterpene found in birch bark and also some medicinal mushrooms. Lupiol is another compound as well, and lupiol is found in chaga. It's actually found in higher concentrations in the birch polypore, but it's also found in the birch bark, in betulinta and other birch trees as well. And there's another triterpenoid compound known as urethrodiol. We don't hear a lot about urethrodiol, but in this study it's been found that urethrodiol can help to increase the cell migration of fibroblasts and also keratinocytes. Now, this isn't the first time that birch bark has been shown to successfully treat wounds. Of course, we already talked about the ethnobotanical research, but even when you look into the scientific literature, you see other reports. For example, in 2010, there was a case study showing that a patient with shingles who failed to respond to conventional treatments successfully was treated with birch bark. And then there are other reports showing that birch bark has been used successfully to treat second degree burning. Now, you're probably wondering how in the world do I use birch bark as a first aid treatment. How can I harvest some of this and how can I make effective medicine out of it? First, I wanna mention if you're looking to harvest birch bark, make sure you do it in a rather sustainable way. Meaning, you probably don't wanna go around just stripping the outer bark off of living birch trees. If the birch trees are on your property and you're looking to thin out your stand anyway, then maybe that's okay. 
However, in the majority of cases, if you have living healthy birch trees and you want to keep them intact, go look for some of the parts that have recently fallen down. So maybe after a big windstorm or a snowstorm, whenever a lot of the snow builds up in some of the branches, it might bring it down. I mean, if, as I take a look around me, I can see recently fallen birch branches. Find the ones that have recently fallen down so that they still have some medicinal potency to them and use those branches. Then to make medicine out of birch bark, what the researchers used in this particular study was the outer bark. Now, when you look at the ethnobotanical records, you will see that the inner bark has been used as well. But in this specific study, it was the outer bark that was able to draw out some of the betulin, the lupiol, and the erythrodiol. When you look at the composition of some of these compounds, you will learn that they are very poorly soluble in water, meaning you can't really just make a tea out of birch bark and then expect to get some of these wound healing properties. You might, but probably not to a substantial degree. So what are we supposed to do? Well, you can use a nonpolar solvent like alcohol or even a fat. And a fat may be best because whenever you think of topical creams or salves, there's usually like an olive oil or another carrier oil in that product. And so you can just simply make an herbal infusion, a solar herbal infusion using, for example, olive oil. So you can harvest some of the bark and you can put it in a jar and top it off with olive oil, for example, and then put that on a windowsill in the sun for maybe at least two weeks six weeks would be good as well, and then strain that out. And you will effectively pull out some of the betulin, some of the lupio, and the erythrodiol. And you could just apply that to your skin as is. Or you could take that a step further and make an herbal salve by adding that product to melted beeswax. And then upon solidifying, you can put that in jars and you will have your own birch bark medicine that you can apply to your skin. Now, there's nothing wrong with going to the grocery store or the herbal shop and outsourcing your first aid needs. There are a lot of great products out there. Honestly, I don't see a lot with birch bark, but you'll see some with other fantastic plants like chickweed and plantain and burdock and comfrey and calendula, all plants that have been shown to stimulate the wound healing process. However, a lot of these products on the market are other than the best ever for your health. So you take a look at some of these conventional lotions, potions, and magic ointments. We can't even pronounce the ingredients half the time. Or you take a look at the ingredients and we can't even imagine from where they came. They're so far removed from the source. Unlike birch or unlike chickweed or plantain. We know what those plants look like and especially in the case if we make these products ourselves then we actually have a story to share now. Not only to share but then to teach to other people and that's how we keep this important information alive. And so I encourage you to take a look around and learn some of the plants and mushrooms that might come in handy topically whenever you need it most. And this is one of those plants we call it a tree which is Betula lenta or pretty much any birch tree that you may need at one point or another in your life. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two about the wound healing properties of the birch tree. And I do really appreciate you watching this video. It means a lot to me. And if you want to stay in touch, I encourage you to head on over to learnyourland.com and we can stay in touch by you signing up for the email newsletter. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel or check me out on social media at Learn Your Land. And again, I do appreciate you watching this video and I hope you learned something and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks again. Take care.